As the genocide raged, imagine the terror of the smallest survivors, some so young they didn't even know their own names. Some children had seen their parents being killed, and most, I would say probably all of them had seen, they'd definitely seen death. And so the ones that were then separated from their families and gathered in there and together, I think they were struggling with just having their basic needs met. World Vision worked to shelter them, reunite them with family if any had survived. But there were so many, hundreds of thousands of small souls left to fend for themselves. Children used to feel lonely because they, they have no parents and they feel uh, like they don't have hope for the future. Twenty-year-old Daniel Safari was one of those children orphaned by catastrophe. My parents were killed in the genocide, but I don't know what happened because I was only one year old. For a while, an uncle took him in, but as a teenager, Daniel was homeless and desperate. It wasn't easy. It was a very difficult experience especially when it came to looking for something to eat. Young people like Daniel are the tragic echo of the genocide, their innocence shattered. I felt bad that I didn't get any love from parents. I didn't experience any kind of love from my parents like I saw happen with other children. For Daniel and thousands of Rwandan orphans, survival was a daily challenge, finding food and shelter, all with the ache of a loss almost too great to comprehend. I always think about my parents, especially during a time of problems. Whenever I have a big challenge that I'm struggling with, I focus back and say, I wish they were here. I wish I had parents. I wish that had not happened. We could see some of them in the street uh, without hope to, to live. That's why World Vision formed business cooperatives across Rwanda, like the bakery opened in 2011, where Daniel now works. World Vision has supported me a lot by first of all bringing us all together in this cooperative. It has got me out of that kind of isolation I was in. Fifty young people work here in teams of five. Together, they bake mandazi, a breakfast cake, preparing it for daily sales. The cooperative is where Daniel has learned a trade and earned enough to move into a small house with a friend. More importantly, it's a place where he's found something beautiful that had so long eluded him. Being in this cooperative has been very important for me because I got a family. They are my friends. They know my situation. And now I have people to talk to whenever I have a problem. When I see them being happy, working together, I feel happy. It is very important for us because it gives us that kind of community. We always feel that we are not alone. It's a crucial step toward healing deep wounds, a chance finally to take shelter in friendship and love. Daniel says he wants to open his own bakery someday. Asked if he dreams of a family of his own, a haunting look of loss and longing appears in his eyes. I need to put myself together and see if I can support a family. I'd be very happy if that happened. But for now, this bakery produces the bread of life. For Daniel and the others, it's a project that gently conjures a sense of family and with God's love, the tender bonds that can carry them to a better future.